Are you approaching retirement age? If so, have you thought about how your healthcare costs will change when you retire? A lot of our clients think that it will be less expensive once they go on Medicare, and that is not in fact the case. We're Michael and Shannon. We are with Healthcare Genius. We're here to provide you with the best information on healthcare and retirement. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified when we come out with new videos. Shannon, today we thought we'd walk through an example with one of our clients. This is an actual case that, that happened. As you mentioned, a lot of people are thinking when they get close to retirement that Medicare is going to save them money, that they're not going to have to pay as much for health care as they did when they were working. So people look forward to that. Unfortunately, in this example, uh, that wasn't the case. Two things to remember about Medicare. One is that if you work for an employer, that is less than 20 employees, when you turn 65, traditionally you're gonna to have to sign up for Medicare for parts A and B. If you work for an employer that's more than 20 employees, then you can stay on that employer plan in most cases. Unless, of course, you're taking Social Security, then you have to at least sign up for part A. But uh, we talk about those details in other videos, so make sure you watch those to, to go through all of the uh, fine details of Medicare. Second thing to remember when you're thinking about Medicare is that it's means tested. Parts B and parts D are means tested. Now, Michael, what does means testing mean and how does it affect most people? Yeah, so essentially we, we like to think of it, one of our clients coined it uh, the punch in the gut tax from Social Security, but it really basically boils down to the fact that Medicare looks at your income prior to your retirement and they base your Medicare premiums for part B and D on what your income was. Now that can change from year to year, but the, the initial one is that two years before you retired in most cases. In the case of, of this client of ours, he was the owner of a company, less than 20 employees. He was turning 65 in June was his birth date. So it's like June 12th. So he actually became eligible for Medicare on June 1st. In May, he was on his employer group plan the premium for him was $1,060, but his employer was covering 50%. Basically, he was covering 50%. <laughs> so he was having to pay $530 out of pocket. But the great thing about employer paid health insurance is that there is a tax break that you get from those premiums when it's paid through what's called a Section 125 plan. So he didn't have to pay federal, state, or FICA, which is Social Security tax, and Medicare tax on that premium. So his net cost was about $290. Not bad, not great, right? But it was 1,060, he was paying 290. Well, when we went to sign him up for Medicare, he was one of those individuals that was means tested. So the traditional $135 Medicare premium didn't really apply to him. He had to pay more. So in his example, he had $135.50 for the basic premium, but then he had a $297, almost $300 charge for the surcharge or the means testing premium for Part B. In addition to that, he had to pay a premium for Part D, which was almost $71. So his total cost just for those plans, for that Medicare plan, was $500 a month. On top of that, he purchased a, a supplemental plan and a Part D prescription drug plan, which took him out to about $660 per month that he was paying. So quite a bit more than the 290 that it was netting him before. Mm -hmm. But what he really didn't realize prior to this was that that 670 to some dollars, 657.50, was not tax deductible to him anymore. So he had gone in May where it was all tax deductible. He was paying $290 and now he was paying $657.50, but he had to pay for it with after-tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So in his situation, it was almost $1,200 that he was having to earn to pay that $657 premium. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, this is somebody who was a business owner, financially savvy, thought he had done a great job of retirement planning, and nobody really told him about this punch in the gut tax from Social Security. Nobody told him it was gonna cost him this much, and it was really, really eye-opening and really troubling for him to have to rearrange his finances to account for this huge swing. Yeah, four times the difference, right? 300 to 1,200, so. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that as a follow-up, he asked us, he had an employee who was also getting close to retirement uh, who had been with him a long time. And he said, can you do an analysis for her? Because maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the anomaly here. So we went ahead and did that. And we looked at her situation. She didn't have the means-tested premiums. So she was paying the 135.50. We put her into the same category as he had been paying with, with a supplemental plan and a Part D plan. So, And just to be clear, she wasn't paying those premiums because of her income. If it's less than in 2019, it's I think $85,000 a year, you're not subject to the mean test, means testing. So this is pretty much the minimum amount that somebody this particular year would pay for the coverage that she wanted. That's right. So it was $288 roughly. Uh, a month that she'd be paying again, not tax deductible. She was a similar age to to the uh, to the owner, so she, her premium again was that thousand sixty, uh, which the company paid half of that. So five thirty when you took out her tax bracket, which was less than the owner, uh, it took her down to about three hundred thirty two dollars that she was paying out of pocket each month for her health care. So again, a situation where uh, Medicare when you factored in the taxes was almost $500, $457 that she had to pay on an after-tax basis to be able to net that uh, $288. So quite a bit more, about 38% you'll see in there. So for her, the difference wasn't quite as big, but again, she, you know, wasn't making as much money as her boss was. And so you can see how, you know, every single month paying that much more for your health care than you were when you were working, it can be really tough for some people. And not only that, Shannon, we were talking to a business owner the other day about some of his employees who are on Medicaid. He brought up the point that as they were transitioning on to Medicare, that they were saying that they no longer qualified for Medicaid. So in Colorado, for most, most individuals, the Medicaid, there's no cost and the, and the cost of going to the doctor is very, very minimal. They were now going on to Medicare and having to pay this 135.50 plus those supplemental plans. So that was a huge shock to his employees where they didn't, they thought that they'd be paying nothing for, for uh, Medicare when they uh, reached age 65. So right. these are just some of the gotchas that we see out there and why it's so important to be thinking about and planning ahead for these costs so that you're aware of them mm -hmm. and that you can try to mitigate those uh, with proper planning. Absolutely. So if you're um, approaching retirement age or if you just want to start planning in the right way, make sure you're talking to your advisor about your health care costs in retirement. Or if you don't have an advisor or if they're not qualified to talk to you about it because as we know, some of them aren't. Make sure you're doing your own research and you know how to plan. If you're an employer, you have a huge opportunity to educate your employees on what they should expect when they retire. And in our opinion, you have a responsibility to do that for your employees and offer that education. So if you need some help and you wanna become a client, feel free to click the link in our description below and apply to become our client. Feel free to watch more YouTube videos. We've got lots of information on healthcare and retirement. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified when we come out with new stuff.